Hey guys, I'm Bear, this is Turtle. Welcome to Athens. Welcome back to Old Souls Travel. We are covering our Athens trip today and we got to spend two and a half days in Athens and we love, love, love Athens and other historical cities like this. Athens is super cool and honestly we could go on and on and on about Athens. Um, so instead, for your sake, we're actually breaking it into a few videos. So expect some videos with some more details on the history and some more details about some of the specific attractions. But today we're going to discuss some of the things we think you should add to your itinerary when you find yourself with a long weekend in Athens. We stayed at this cool little place right down near the Agora, right at the base of the hill that you have to climb up to get to the Acropolis. And as we normally do, we got up at the butt crack of dawn so that we could go see some of this without all the crowds. The one thing about waking up so early is we actually were too early for our complimentary breakfast. <laughs> so it was nice getting out there really early, but we definitely needed to stop by and get some coffee and get a little snack. So we're here near our hotel in Athens at this little coffee shop. Um, and of course we had to get a Kalole. Um, and they are kind of like little bagels. Uh, normally they have like sesame seeds on them, but this one's Asiago. So uh, not as traditional, but still looks pretty good. Good, just like a bagel. Similarly to a lot of places in Europe, Greek people like to have their dinner really late, which means that they like to sleep in, which was really nice for us waking up super early because there was like no crowds all around the city. There was a nice brisk walk up there, but there was so much to see and nobody in the way. And that's mm -hmm. what I really loved. It was the golden hour. And it was a great time to just sit back, see some of the sights and maybe teach you guys a little bit. One of the things that I really love about Athens and uh, Rome and a lot of these towns is that you can just turn a corner and find something really special. And there's a really nice mosaic down here from the second century AD. They call it the House of the Roman Mosaic. And it's just like these ruins that are just sitting out in the middle of nowhere. And everything here is tagged except for that. So good job, Athenians, to not go and tag the real historical things. And being an archaeologist, I could stop and see like every little thing along the way, but you really do want to get up there and be like one of the first people there. We were actually the second people there. We got there at 7.45. It opens at 8 o'clock. The tours start to get there at 10 o'clock, but make sure you have your 20 euros and that you're raring to go nice and early. Right, it's 20 euros to get in, and if you just want to go to the Acropolis, that's awesome, just do that. We actually recommend doing the combined ticket if you're going to go to some of the other attractions, because it's really great deal. It's 30 euros, and it's over a course of five days, and you get into the Acropolis, the ancient Agora, the Acropolis Museum, the Temple of the Olympian Zeus, Hadrian's Library, a bunch of other things that I don't remember, but it's like pretty much all of the attractions and it's only 30 euros. So definitely recommend doing that. Yep, save your money because there's more trips to be had. And after you go through the entrance and you're making your way up the hill, getting closer to the Parthenon and the rest of the Acropolis, it's just, the views are amazing and you're building up your excitement. You're like, 
We are almost there. This is something I've wanted to do bucket for a list, while. Maybe. Bucket list, bucket list, bucket yeah. list. Uh, but make sure that you don't miss the awesome theater over on your right. It is actually called the Odeon of Herodus Atticus, mm -hmm. and it is really impressive. We're standing here with this great view almost up to the top of the Acropolis, standing in front of a beautiful theater that looks like they still use it. And the seats are all marble like they would have been back in the day. They did a wonderful job of restoring it, but they balanced it really well with not restoring the backdrop. I think this would be a wonderful place to catch a live act, uh, maybe a musical concert. Some classical music would be wonderful right now. And after you leave the Odeon, you're walking back up that same hill again and the excitement continues to build. And the thing that you see most clearly from this angle is mm -hmm. the Temple of Athena Nike and it's gorgeous and really nicely restored. Mm -hmm. And then you actually get to the entrance or the Propylaea, which is this Doric column complex that essentially serves as the gateway into the Acropolis. And that's really cool to see. And it's one of the places where you can get the closest look at the Doric columns, which is really awesome. And after we enter the gateway, you're looking all around, you're seeing this amazing architecture all around you, but you're immediately drawn toward probably the most famous building in the Acropolis, the Parthenon, which is just incredible. And you know, you see pictures of it. It really doesn't give it justice though until you're actually there and you're up close and you can see just the magnitude of this amazing architectural creation. Right, and you're walking along and you can see it, but it's kind of like a construction zone. Well, so man. there's all this like scaffolding and things and so, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong, but they're probably gonna be fixing this thing for like the rest of your lifetime, let alone mine. So we decided to share with you a computer generated model of the condition it's in right now. Beyond the Parthenon is this little area where they have a flagpole and they have a big Greek flag and that's really cool. It's a great place to get some Instagram shots of the Acropolis from a cool angle, as well as the whole city because it's way up high. So you can see just about everything, including some of the attractions we're gonna talk about a little bit later. If you look off in the distance, you can see the Panathianic Stadium where they used to do the horse races. And then if you look further to the right, you can see the Temple of Zeus. And then down below is Hadrian's Arch. So this is a great viewpoint. It's right up here on the Acropolis. And your next building that you see is the Erechtheion. And this is like the old temple of Athena before they decided to build the new temple, which is the Parthenon. It probably has one of my very favorite architectural elements in the whole site. It is called the Patio of the Caryatids. And there's these beautiful women as pillars that are holding this porch. And after you're done staring at the women, if you look off to your left, you're going to see this rock that just kind of sticks out of the city. And according to mythology, it's rumored that that fell off of Athena's hand. After we had shot for a couple of hours, it really started to get a little bit warmer and the crowd started to pick up and I don't really love group tours, so it seemed like a good time to hit the door. And we hope that you're excited to go see Athens, but if you want a real feel for the place, you really need to tune in next Thursday because we're going to do a full tour on the Acropolis, the Agora, in the Acropolis Museum. And not only were the crowds starting to get a little annoying, but we also were starting to get a little hungry and we wanted to actually make it back to our hotel to take advantage of that free breakfast because we still had some time. Um, and on our way, we saw this really cool little treat. So nothing like a refreshing cocktail to go after hiking up a couple of hills and you can get those here. We're gonna have a nice basil smash. Two basil smashes, please. 
you pick up your cocktail, you just head over to the local park, sit down, have a nice drink. Yamas. Yamas. And we made it back with like five minutes to spare before they shut down breakfast. I'm sure they probably weren't that happy with us. And a bad, bad YouTuber. We only shot footage when we first arrived at the hotel. We will have to get a little better at that. But we have learned to expect, especially in Europe, that the breakfast will be good. And this one did not disappoint. After grabbing breakfast, we went over to the ancient Agora, which is this really cool place. It's got its own really cool museum, and there's the marketplace there, which was cool. And there's also that cool Byzantine church, and so it's kind of got like layer upon layer upon layer. Mm -hmm. And I thought that it was one of the highlights of the trip. It was really cool. I especially like the Temple of Hephaestus. That was really awesome, and to see how preserved that was, was amazing. Plus, Hephaestus is a really interesting guy. And they've used it as a church until recently, which is why it's so well preserved. But if you want to hear and learn a lot about that, you're going to have to tune in next week. And that was quite a day. We went back and actually took a nap because of the early start. And uh, we went out for a late dinner because that is what you do in Greece. And we walked around our neighborhood. There was a lot of really pretty views of the Acropolis all lit up at night and Hadrian's library all lit up. Those were wonderful. And then we went upstairs. They have all these restaurants with terraces mm -hmm. and the view's amazing. Yeah, we got to eat a lot of traditional meals. Uh, we had tabbouleh and a couple other things that the waiter recommended for us. But I think the highlight was definitely the view of the Acropolis all lit up and you're just, just eating and just mesmerized by that view. And I felt really blessed to be able to eat there and would do it again. Yeah, it costs a little more than we <laughs> usually spend, but uh, sometimes it's worth it. Sunday morning we woke up and luckily we were able to sleep in a little bit. Uh, that was really nice. It also meant that we were able to catch our continental breakfast, um, which was really nice. You know, when we were coming back the day before, they didn't have everything because it was like near the end of it. So having the opportunity to actually see everything was really nice. And we got to have some of the traditional calories, some cheese pastries, some really yummy yogurt with some honey on it and uh, really nice. On a Sunday, there's a special thing that you do want to catch. So make sure that you leave your hotel at a decent hour because you need to be over at the Parliament Building at 11 o'clock because there is something really special there. And if you get there early, you can get a front row seat to the changing of the guards. The guards are called the Ev Zones and they're like this special group of Hellenic soldiers and they're recruited because of what they look like kind of you have to be like in good shape in this certain height or whatever and your main job is to stand perfectly still for 60 minutes there's even a story about one during a car bombing not moving until he was ordered to do so which is pretty impressive as is their little leg kick march that they do and that's actually strategic also if you've been standing around for 60 minutes without moving at all, you need to worry about blood circulation. So they do this cool march and you get to see them all doing a ceremony on Sunday mornings. And they are in these really cool kilts. They have 400 folds for the 400 years that they were under the Ottoman reign. And they celebrate that they are kicking it off with their 10 pound shoes. So they really have to do a lot of leg exercises, I think. And after you see the changing of the guards, we recommend going over to the Monastiraki neighborhood. And that's actually where we decided to stay. And we did a lot of walking around there, really cool city. But I think the highlight was probably Hadrian's library. And we got to see that at night and it was really beautiful and it was all lit up. Um, and that was, that was really special. Right, and Hadrian is really special. You're talking about probably my favorite of the five good emperors, which is uh, 
I guess you could count the good emperors of Rome on one hand. And we've been running into Hadrian this and Hadrian that pretty much all over Europe. Uh, there was a Hadrian monument in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. um, I got to go to his summer house in Tivoli with Coach Mac, which was really rewarding and amazing. There's a Hadrian's Arch here and a Hadrian's Library, and he also built the Temple of Olympian Zeus here. Mm -hmm. He finished the Pantheon and he did this big giant wall up in England. One of the things that draws me to him absolutely the most is he spent like 50% of his reign outside of Rome, just going around and consolidating and seeing things and just experiencing life. And we definitely enjoyed ourselves when we were in Monastraki. We ate all of our night meals here and it's also just a really cool city to walk around. There's this little church that's right next to this mosque that's really awesome to look at. So definitely make sure you check out the Monastiraki neighborhood when you are in Athens. And stay there if you want to be really close to things because I think that was one of the best decisions that we made. Mm -hmm. But our next stop is Plaka, which is also this really cool neighborhood. And this is the place where you're gonna find a lot of the street foods. As a matter of fact, we stopped at one that we didn't know was famous, mm -hmm. but we should have by the line. And if you go, you should definitely check this place out. The one thing I've learned when we're out going for street food is that if you see a nice long line, that's the place to go. So let's see if I'm right. We had some really yummy food there and I'm really glad we stopped and it was it was interesting that afterwards we looked it up on TripAdvisor and it's really highly rated. Uh, normally we'll look at TripAdvisor and we'll go and find the place that's highly rated but this time we were just super hungry and came across it and the line did not let us down at all. But Plaka is just cool because it's actually the Turkish quarter so during the Ottoman Empire this is where all the Turks lived so that's really interesting and you can still see some of the elements of that, but unfortunately it did burn down in 1884. Well, unfortunately and fortunately, because when it burnt down, it exposed a lot of the old ruins. So for an old archeologist like me, it wasn't that unfortunate. There are some really cool ruins hidden here and there. The highlight of which is the Roman Agora. The highlight of the Roman Agora is the Tower of the Winds. And the Tower of the Winds is this beautiful tower. They actually say it was the first meteorological research center in the world. Mm. And uh, it has like depictions of all these deities on every side from which the wind came. And it's just beautiful. One thing that is for sure, it might not have told too much about whether hurricanes were coming or whatever the equivalent is in the Mediterranean, but it did tell time. So much like the al Kazaba in Alhambra, you have one main tower and as it casts shadows, you know what time it is. And after Plaka, we wanted to get over to Lycabetus Hill, uh, which is a really great place to see the sunset over the Acropolis. Um, and if you look at a map, it doesn't look like it's too difficult, but you do earn a lot of swerving in and out just to even get to the base of the hike. Uh, so it's a hike just to get there, and then you run into like dead end roads. So it's a little difficult to get there, so we definitely recommend making sure you have enough time, because um, unfortunately, we were a little bit later than we wanted to and it was hard to get a good seat, but uh, it was still really beautiful. Right, and we did decide we were gonna take the funicular up because I think we would have missed getting you this great footage of the sunset that you're watching here if we would have decided to hoof it up that hill. But I definitely suggest doing this. It is really a commanding view and you see the sun going down over the Acropolis and over the water and the colors were wonderful while we were there. And it was a really good way to get your day capped off. Mm -hmm. And all we had left was a nice dinner. So we headed back towards home and we found this cool little place with probably the best bargain we had in Athens. Holy cow, this is a lot of food and it was only 24 euros. We got four different kinds of euros and we got some more uh, tabbouleh and uh, what was this called again? I don't know, but it's got feta cheese, tomatoes and capers.
The next morning, we recommend waking up pretty early so you can get over to the Pantheonic Stadium by seven o'clock and you actually can get in for free as long as you're actually exercising, which is a really cool feeling. You get to kind of put yourselves in the sneakers of the athletes because this was the site where they had the original Olympics in 1896. So that's really awesome. Otherwise, you could just pay the $4 or if you got the combined ticket like we talked about before, then you get in for free. Um, but just a little tip for you guys, I definitely recommend doing that. Absolutely, and this is also where they would actually transfer the torch every time. And if you want to see where they light the torch every time, shameless plug, you need to check in with us in about four weeks when we actually do Olympia. And then right next to it, there is the Temple of the Olympian Zeus, which is not to be confused with the Temple of Zeus in Olympia. Uh, they had a larger statue here it was not the one that was one of the seven wonders that was in olympia but they had the largest cult statue in the world here fun little trivia hidden in its 104 columns was a statue which was featured in disney's hercules i'm not sure it was that accurate though and the temple of olympian zeus was another one of those under construction sites they will probably be under construction for at least the next like, I don't know, 30, 40 years. 500. <laughs> 500. 638, that's how long it took for Hadrian to finish building it the first time. But it's still pretty cool and as you're leaving you're going under Hadrian's Arch which is really nice and then you're really close to some of the museums. And we suggest that you finish off your three days there in one of the museums. The major ones are open on Mondays since this is a Monday. The smaller ones are closed though. So if you are going to try to see some of the smaller museums, make sure that you plan ahead. But there's the Archaeological Museum of Greece, which we missed. And I really regret that, but we will be back. And uh, it's supposed to be one of the top archaeological museums in the world, which makes sense because you're in one of the top archaeological cities in the right. world. We did decide to prefer and to go to the Acropolis Museum because it works better for next week's episode. And uh, it was spectacular too. I really enjoyed that was it. really cool. And I really enjoyed everything in Athens and I hope you guys did too. And we hope that you find the time to visit Athens sometime in the next couple of years because it is definitely bucket list worthy. And as always, find, find yourself on a journey. journey.